It's great to be here at your brewery after spending all our time together up in the States. What'd you think of the first test batch we did that brought down here? Yeah, tasting it? Yeah, really, really cool. Interesting. I, was... I like that we're going to tweak this version and change it a little bit. Tweak it up. Tweak yeah, it up. I think it was really hard me leaving. I think I got actually got to taste it. When, as when we brew it, as work. like it had about 12 hours for manning. I got to taste it like really late <laughs> the next night or something. Yeah. Like I'm in the pub and it's like, hey. I'm yeah. sure you remember that well. But no, because it was worth it. It was like sweet and you had that smoky character. But having it finished, it's, it's quite different. Yep. And um, no, but it's neat to be down here. And so while this thing, uh, I'm psyched for to, I won't get to try this version, but we'll be sharing the version we did in the States at. Uh, Birvana, which will be cool, right? Yeah, and sharing with the other people. Yeah, and there's like it's not going to be a lot of it. There's not. We got two sixtals. It is what it is. So, <laughs> have there been collaborative brews done here in New Zealand with other breweries working together? Or? No. Really? Really? No. It's not a big thing here in New Zealand yet. Yep. I think we're still such a young industry. We're probably about ten years behind what's happening in the states. Yep. And I think sort of the there you go. I'm double fisting now. Don't, don't mind me. That, that's actually why I made the stout. I made the stout to go with the IPA. So they're supposed to be drank at the same time. So like you get the big hops on the palate, then and you the clean rose. it out with malt, then the hops come back. I like it. It's the way it should be. I like it. That's so, why you've got two hands. But you've done, uh, exactly, I'm, gonna, I'm done with that one. But you've done, you've done other, you did a collaboration in the UK. Yeah. Is it, it, it's a little more common over there and obviously very common in the US, but probably not other industries that uh, I know of. I was actually the, the first New Zealand brewer to do an, a collaborative brew that, mm -hmm. that I'm aware of. I did that with Thornbridge in the UK nice. um, last year, 2009. Yep. And then um, Kelly Ryan from Thornbridge came to New Zealand because he's a Kiwi brewer. Oh yeah. And um, he came back for a wedding um, over the last summer. Yeah. And we did a brew together here. Here, yeah. Here. Nice. So nice. Um, that was actually the first international collaborative brew in New Zealand. Nice. So um, yeah, we're sort of setting a trend, and now you're here. Yeah. And that's sort of sort of my third one. I love it. I and love it. Um, why do you think our industry is ripe for this? Where little know. companies can come together and do these kinds of projects. It seems. Like an anomaly that we're technically all friendly competitors, but working together. I think the thing is, we have so much more to gain mm -hmm. than to lose. Because I think if you look at the big brewers, they have their market share and they can only see, they're protecting their position. It's like, oh my God, we've got to protect our 45% market share or whatever they might have. And no one can take that from them. And we're just going, whatever we do, we gain. Yeah. We're all like on this rising tide, as you say. Yeah. It yeah. just keeps growing, and it's like, well, if we do something with someone else, then that helps both parties. It, it actually helps you more than if you did something by yeah. yourself. Like exponentially, when you kind of have one plus one equals three, if you can turn each other's, if the lovers of Epic on a dogfish, lover of dogfish on an Epic, every time those projects happen, it kind of goes out in concentric circles. And, and that's why, and, and in New Zealand, the only growth, like in the States, is coming from the craft brewers, correct? Yeah, totally. So, and similar size and base. In and it's not, it's not even share. that we both benefit, is we've created something that's even more interesting and draws more people in. And then everybody else in the industry wins from it because we've created more interest that may have brought someone in that's craft. drink yeah, in, in craft. In general. A beer drinker or yep. a wine drinker or someone that's not even really into to beer at all. And they're yep. going, wow, what's this thing where they've put a beer bottle inside a squirrel? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I read about that. God bless those guys. And what's also neat, I think, and why even in, in the States, the craft's growing and the big guys are flat, part of that is because the consumer's choosing. And there's not, unlike the big breweries, us little guys, we don't have giant advertising campaigns, but because of the explosion in social media, we, have, we can have the same profile online yeah. as a giant brewery, and it's given us a voice and then a means towards a dialogue that I think the big breweries can't effectively copy, you know? No, well, we can engage our um, drinker mm -hmm. on a one-to-one -one level. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that through Twitter and Facebook, and it's like, hey, this is what we're doing today. Yep. We're cutting up Tamarillos and blending them up and yep. making a beer out of it, and people know that it's happening right now. Yep, and that's so much more authentic than giant, you know, television. And going, hey, we're going to spend $50 campaigns. million dollars on billboards and yep. TV advertising. It's we're like, going to well, yell at you. We're not yeah. going to talk with you. We're going to tell so you the way it's going to be, and you're going to like it. So have you, like, uh, looked at your hands recently? Mine are like... Have uh, I? Yeah, I nearly drew for a wash. I look like we've... Sort of like 
<laughs> murdered someone. We got, so we pureed all those tamarillos. How many kilos? 100 kilos. But we got it done, and now... Yeah, I think it took us about two and a half hours of cutting the stalks off and, and, and then, pureeing. Then and we got the, then we're doing some of it charred, right? Some of it charred. And most of it natural fruit into the kettle. Or whirl? Whirlpool now. Yeah. Because they're... A little work, on the fly. Just that the wet receiver didn't like the chunks. <laughs> the wet receiver was throwing, throwing <laughs> up our tamarillo <laughs> pretty much. Couldn't keep it down, but I think on the, brew, it. the brew process has gone really well. And you're, so the plan is we'll take the, the version we did together in the States yep. to Birvana, while yep. literally the version we did together in New Zealand it's is fermenting. fermenting. Yep. And, uh, and then within weeks, this batch will be ready. What's your plans for this batch? Um, we're probably looking at an early October release. Mm. So we've still got to finalize a label yep. um, and stick it in a bottle. Probably do a few kegs, but just for special accounts. Yes, yeah. yeah. So it'll only, only go accounts. probably out to about four four bars in New Zealand. That's it. Australia's just really screaming for some. Yeah, they just want it so bad. They're going to get bottled, but they want kegs as well. What, so. what would you say is the difference right now when you say Australia's screaming for some? They're just more receptive to more exotic beers right now, or what? Yeah, well, it's a bigger market. It's five yeah. times the size of New Zealand. Yeah. Um, there's a bigger. What do you guys? You're about five million people here, right? Four. Four. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll take five. Yeah, <laughs> no. four-ish. Four. Australia's twenty million. Yeah. So, um, but it's each state's like a country in itself. Yeah. It's kind of like the states. It's like the east coast is very different from the west coast. Yeah. So you've got different trends happening. But um, craft beer over there, they're just really looking for something new and is better that and exciting. Number one uh, export market. Yeah. Australia. Yeah. yeah. But it is like you're getting back to it being truly. A, it, it is a global mo movement. Craft. Beer. Oh, it is. It is. And, you know, Dogfish has been in it for 15 years. You've been professionally brewing for nearly the same, same, same amount of yeah. time. And uh, it, in the last two years, you know, the pilgrimage has gained momentum. Wouldn't you say really it's, it seems to be seeping into the mainstream yep. at a greater rate than in my whole professional I, career? I think but if you stand sort of like go right back and even stand back from like craft beer, I think it's happening right across all food and beverage and probably other industries as well. People just sick of being going here's the homogenized whatever right. commodity yep. that you're buying it's all wonder bread yep yep light lager yeah wonder light bread. Lager. choose your category yeah. but the instant same. coffee it's just yep. like people get sick of that yep. eventually yeah and i think that maybe it's our generation are going well we're not putting up with that shit anymore yeah I think we're, we're going to make a difference. I agree. With, I agree. And like here we are, you know, worldwide recession. It, it seems counterintuitive that the highest end of an industry is where the growth would be. Yeah. But I think you know the consumers are like, okay, our our generation saying, all right, I don't need a fancy freaking SUV. I don't need a super duper fancy house. The sh stuff that matters to me is is like beer, food, the and I don't that, need to go out and buy twenty four beers and drink them. Right. Two or three quality over quantity beers is where kind of people are making that choice, you know, yeah. and choosing with their wallet to vote for the little artisanal guys instead of the intergalactic conglomerates. You know? Intergalactic. Screw them. Planetary. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think in New Zealand that you've been here a whole 24 hours now? Well, I had my first beer at 1030 and nobody blinked, so I felt a huge kindred. What, 10, 1030 yesterday or 1030 today? A.M. today. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I love it. I mean, it was funny leaving my little town in Delaware. Uh, we, my neighbors, we told them where we were going, getting in the car. They're like, oh, you're going to love it. We were there years ago. The hardest thing about New Zealand isn't going. It's actually wanting to leave once you're there. And I can already feel that. I mean, I've only experienced Auckland thus far, but I'm loving it. We had this beautiful meal at the top of the, looking at, at the Sky rotating tower. city. I mean, that was just mind-boggling. So it's beautiful. You can see that you're craft beer movement is burgeoning and I'm getting to see your country's biggest beer festival while I'm here, right? Beer, Meet every brewer. Beervana is the Literally. biggest, is it the biggest festival in the country? Um, not for volume or for the number choice, of people. Though. For choice, yeah. biggest by so far. Yeah. It's like How many probably, different beers will be there, would you say? Um, at least 175. That's if awesome. we break 200 this year, it would be really exciting. But not, it's not about that, but the because you, you're not going to be able to drink more than 30 beers in three hours. Is that hours. a challenge, Luke? Is that, that some sort of challenge? It is to you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about getting that many. And, and Just the choice. The, the consumer, yeah. there's choice out there. Huge choice. And that room is representing this, this blossoming realm of choice that wasn't there 10 years ago, right? 
Bevanas where it's happening. It's, it's been slow, and I guess um, GABF, what, 20 years ago was like that. It was like convincing people, come along and try these beers. Yep. But now it's like they sell out in a few weeks, right. a month or so before the actual event. There's brew pubs that come that are like in really random parts of the country, which are a real effort to get to, but they come along and bring their beers, and you're going, wow, I can come to this place. If you worked out how much it would cost... Geography, you know, gas-wise, right? Oh, even gas-wise, flying there, whatever, right. it would cost you probably thousands of dollars right. to visit all these breweries right. to actually try their beers, but it's all in one place. It's only yeah. cost, cost like 30 bucks to get in. Yeah. And you can go, great, I'm going to spend four hours, try all the beers I can't get to, yeah. Yeah. or haven't tried before, and you're going away and going, wow, I'm going to yeah. look out for their stuff. Yeah, oh, that's neat. I can't wait to do that. And most of the brewers are actually at their booths, right? So you're meeting the you people meet the brewer. that made your beer. Yeah, and that's, that, that's, cool. that's, that's, that's the greatest part. And that's what I used to love when before I got into brewing was meeting brewers and going, hey, how do you do this? And why do you do it? And what motivates yeah. you? And wow, your beer's really great. And why does it taste like that? It's and a I think that altruistic, mutually supportive industry. Where, totally. You know, and, and I love being the brewer on the other side, sort of sharing that, especially when someone shows a lot of interest in, in your passion and yeah. you just you can share that and go, wow, you care. And, and you go, well, this is how I made it and this is why it tastes like that and this yeah. is what inspires me. And that sharing is moving the industry forward, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. What's that education process? Amen. Yeah. Keep educating while we keep drinking. Indeed. We can do both. We can. <laughs>